Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Art Whisperer 88. On your screen you will see uh, my artist loft, uh, red ochre. And I'm going to use this as a background. This will be my first layer um, in order to provide a foundation for uh, here, let me show you. Now these are my plastic stencils. And as you can see, they've been used a lot. Uh, now they don't clean up perfectly, but I don't mind that there's some residue because it does help me uh, visually identify them and, and helps me to pull them off uh, as opposed to if they were clear here's an example of a clear one this is a little more difficult to see after I've inked the plate but hey they work so I'm just going to keep using them um, they uh, certainly didn't cost much and are reusable and washable so why not so here's a collection of the uh, circular and half circular stencils and i'm going to create a composition with them so uh, first of all i'm gonna ink the plate and use this, I guess there's not much left. It's a very beautiful, intense red ochre. Um, now this is by Artist Loft. sure that I have enough Now in this case, I'm doing the first layer as a very even flat uh, sheet of color. There's no blending or mixing of any other color. Okay. I have that nice and even and then um, I'm going to apply some circular strokes like I usually do Okay, and I'm going to use my new stock of Somerset Velvet. Um, I'm beginning to like using it a lot. And by the way, um, this is a solution for some stubborn 
rares. I had a comment from a viewer that she couldn't get the paint off. So this is what you do. You, the moment you're done with your brayer, with your rolling, I just soak it in a tub of soapy water. Now there are some artists, a lot of gel print artists who like to use the brayer on odd sheets of paper for collage. I mean, that's, that's great if you can do that. Uh, but in my case, I prefer to start fresh with, with clean brayers. I think it makes it more straightforward, especially I'm doing a demo. Uh, and when you do art demo, uh, sometimes when you have residue, it's very distracting. So that's just me. So anyways, um, here's the first layer. So let's see what we got. I think the scribbles are very bold and distinct because the red ochre is, is a deep color. This serves as the background and then you will see as I do the second and maybe a third even a fourth pass um, you will see how I assemble the uh, other elements to build up this composition so I'm going to air dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, I set the uh, first layer aside. Um, I've assembled my stencils um, with this sort of vertical type composition and the colors I will use to give contrast are Naples yellow and some deep magenta. So um, I will start with some spots of deep magenta, not a whole lot, just some touches here and there. And then the rest will be Naples yellow. Now I've also had a couple of comments from a viewer, uh, two in fact, that were suggesting that I ink the plate first and then place the stencils uh, with the reason that it would be easier. Now, I agree that it's easier, but um, see, I, I compose the layout on the plate, and sometimes I change my mind because if I don't feel that it looks good, I want to shuffle these things. Now, if I ink the plate and place the, sh the stencils on, there's no room to, to do any revisions. And that's the reason I prefer to do it this way. And, and every artist has their own uh, habits. And this just happens to be 
one of my habits that I'm comfortable with. So, um, I'll try that other method at another time and it might be more practical in some respects but um, like I've mentioned many times before this process is always a surprise it doesn't matter how much I plan or I think things out because the result is always unexpected. Okay, so. Hopefully this combination of Naples yellow and deep magenta will give it a kind of a painterly look. Okay. I'm trying to get rid of the uh, squishy parts. Okay, so this goes into the soapy water and I'm going to place my stencils on my cardboard to get them out of the way. Here's one more. That's why it's good to inspect every square inch of this piece, just to make sure I didn't forget. Okay. So now, I think by now the first layer has dried. Just to refresh your memory, here is the first layer of red ochre. Now on the outset, when I was first starting, I was very picky about keeping the back of the paper clean but it's very hard to do that um, I try my best to keep the paper clean uh, especially the the front part especially the edges and the borders but um, 
it's almost impossible to keep the back side clean. That's from constant pulling and air drying. Um, Okay, uh, I think I, have, I had mentioned this before that this Somerset Velvet is different from the Somerset texture that I used to have. It tends to ripple or wrinkle more because of the moisture of the uh, paint. But once the paper dries, the wrinkling straightens out. That's just uh, my observation. So let's see what we got here. I think that's a good second layer. There we go. It's beginning to look like uh, textile. It's not my immediate intention, but sometimes it's uh, it just turns out that way, which is okay. So again, I'm going to air dry this and consider the third layer. So I'll be right back. Okay, I think this is dry enough that I can do this. Uh, here are some of the reused plastic stencils. Now these are all angular or box shaped and I'm going to see if I can compose the next layer. make sure that the elements fit. Okay, and then the reason I have to do this is so I can get an idea of where the pieces will fall because everything has to be done backwards or in reverse. So this will have to be on the plate on this side this will have to be on that side and so on and so on. So uh, I'm going to use this as a reference point. So that goes here and I have to flip it because it's backwards. And then all these pieces go on this side This goes like that. And then this goes like that. And this piece goes here. This piece goes here and then this one goes I'm just gonna have to make them fit 
and this is the reason why I I don't like to ink the plate before I do this because I won't be able to shuffle things around to make them fit. There. Now, um, my le next layer is going to be fairly dark. It's going to be this artist loft, phthalo green, and um, this is still brand new. It still has the protective foil. And again, I will be using a small brayer so I can work around the spaces because it's really not necessary to ink this. I just ink the open spaces. I, I do love this color. It's very rich, kind of like a teal color. In fact, this reminds me of uh, a room in my friend's house and he had asked me to decide what colors to paint and I suggested this color and the results were stunning if I may say so myself because it changes at different times of the day okay just getting rid of the the high parts or the squishy parts. I'm trying to avoid making it too blotchy. I think I got all the high parts, or the thick parts of the paint. Okay. Again, this goes straight into soapy bath. Sometimes the residue from the stencil offsets, but that's all right. It might add to the textures. I don't think it will, but if it does, that's okay too. It's purely accidental. It was not intended that way, but sometimes it looks good.
Okay, I think I got it all. These are not little stencils. Let me just make sure my fingers are clean. Because I can't stand fingerprints on the edges of the paper. So here is the piece with the second layer. Okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to add the green. By the way, um, this is a uh, reference to the choice of colors that I'm using. I did some research on the art of the 1930s and the 1940s, and these colors, for some reason, were used a lot, like browns and greens and beige. And I'm trying to capture that feel. It's a mid 20th century kind of look. Okay, let's see what we got. like this. Now the phthalo green is slightly transparent so it does show what's underneath and I'm, I'm happy about that and I'm glad that this didn't transfer but this is really dry. Very cool. I, I like the uh, contrast. And it does really capture that mid 20th century look. So um, I will air dry this and see if I can attempt be ambitious and attempt a fourth layer. So don't go away. Okay, I'm back after a short break. Um, I've assembled my stencils and I have here, these are the non reusable uh, ones. Oh, these were these were the these came from the package of the plastic dividers and I thought I'd save them because I can always use this is a coated paper which would make a nice stencil it's a one-use thing so I figured you know why not why not make good use of it and uh, this is parchment, another, another artist's loft color that I like a lot. So I will use this parchment as probably the last layer. see how this goes. I may pick up some of these uh, residue from the stencils. 
I may or may not, doesn't matter. As you can see, the disadvantage of using the paper stencils, they are one use. They tend to fall apart quickly with the, once they come in contact with the water content of the paint, they start to soften and fall apart. So that's the reason why I really prefer to use the reusable stencils okay so I think I've covered that let me get these guys off So this I can't save. Okay. away but it's good for what it is you know it's a one-time thing okay let me just make some room here on my little table Here is the print that has three layers. I will attempt a fourth layer. Now when this paper is dry the ripples go away so it's not a it's not a problem as long as you keep the paper reasonably dry and not leave the paper on too long on the plate you should be fine uh, I think if this paper is left too long, it will tear. Okay, let's see what we got. I like that. I like the... Uh, mottled textures and here you are I think this does capture that mid-century modern kind of look going to call this finished 
I don't think it needs any other elements, uh, uh, not even collage. At the on the outset, I thought I was going to add some uh, black tissue paper or some of the copy paper, but I I think this is a standalone print, and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I hope you are too. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you had as much fun as I did making this print. Uh, I hope to see you next time.